Yo, shouts to all the people that went to the Bad Bunny concert. In particular, shouts to all the white girls who showed up. <laughs> now, at what point? Now, let me explain why. Baby girl, if you listen to me, I don't mean you. <laughs> Here's why I say that. I was sitting amongst a group of Mexicanos, right? Mm -hmm. And it was us. It was my, my wife's Dominican friends, her, me, and there was a, another group of, like, Puerto Rican and Dominicans next to us. In front of us, it was about three or four people who honestly thought Taylor Swift was going to be there. You know what <laughs> right, I mean? Right. And they started chanting, Benito, Benito, Bad Bunny's name, mm -hmm. right? Benito. Sure. Uh, the people behind us thought it'd be really funny to chant, Mexico, Mexico. <laughs> mm. And then they realized, uh, it's not Mexico, all right, joke's over. So they stopped. And the white girls in front of us sort of caught themselves. You know, when you would chant one more time than everyone else, their chant was, I'm not making this up, where'd he go? Where'd he go? <laughs> because there was a time when, when Bad Bunny sort of disappeared from the stage and they were chanting for him to come back. Wow. And they did the where'd he go. So everyone got it wrong. <laughs> well, shouts for coming to the, to the show anyway. We need your laughter. Okay. Bad Bunny getting, uh, I mean, we should start every show talking about Bad Bunny. I'm not going to do that. I mean, we could. That. <laughs> I, I have a Bad Bunny anecdote. Oh, please do. Let's go. Please. So he Let's go. went to Oakland, had a concert there. Uh huh. And there is a very good Puerto Rican restaurant in our neighborhood called Soul Food. Mm. And it's fantastic if you're in the Bay Area. He Chicago. went. He went, didn't tell him he, they were yes. going, and brought like 85 of his <laughs> members. And they were so overwhelmed, not only because Bad Bunny was there, but because 85 right. people right. just yes. showed up at this little tiny restaurant. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's, it's legendary in I our area I remember the now. video of that. Yeah. Oh, that was great. Yeah. Oh, yeah, the little old lady who runs the place yeah. was like, get that my son. <laughs> <laughs> it was unreal. That's amazing. amazing. Okay, cool. real quick, what's your favorite Bad Bunny song, Jimmy Conrad? <laughs> I don't know if I have a favorite. Oh, okay, because you love the whole catalog. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna give you one of these. Okay. <laughs> no, uh, I just. How can I choose a favorite? It's like children. <laughs> I respect him as an entertainer. Yeah. yeah. So there's no one song. That what I love, what I love most about him is if you look at this array of photos we have in front of us. There's not one where you think it's the same person as the person to the right. <laughs> the the right. I mean, this is uh, this is my favorite. Bad that is Bunny his photo. most iconic. I yeah, think, yeah, this yeah, one here. Yeah. This, uh, and probably a pose. There's a lot working there. There's a pose. I did the two pinkies up. I did this pose a couple of times, thinking, yeah, I like it, and then I realized I'm not Bad Bunny. <laughs> I can't really pull that. He off. tries things. He does. Exactly. And, and I appreciate that. He is. Uh, I mean, look. I mean, one of the biggest. Is, uh, is he the biggest entertainer in the world right now? I guess that's, that's safe to say. Probably one of yeah. them. It's either, it's either him, Bessel Bloom, or like Drake. Yeah, so, well, yeah, Drake ain't coming after Bad Bunny. I know no. that. You don't want that smoke. <laughs> anyway, yeah. hello, everybody. Welcome to the Cool Again. <laughs> uh, my name is Christian Polanco. I'm Alexis Guerrero. Uh, and yeah, you, you've already heard his Bad Bunny opinions coming yeah. through. He, has, you, he only has USMNT opinions and Bad Bunny opinions. That's all <laughs> he, comes, he comes through with. Uh, but we are joined uh, by a man who hasn't been on the show in way too long, but he is one of the, he is one of the folks that helped help build what Cooligans is today. He is part of the pillars. Exactly. One of the, the most Cooligans. the most most ardent supporters, advisors. Alexi Lawless is here? <laughs> hey, hey, no. no, we didn't say political advisor. No, no. Podcast <laughs> advisor. Kidding. We, did, we didn't say he was storming the Capitol. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> we should have him on the Do we have an episode that day? I'll make sure to schedule it for next year. <laughs> Unless he's Alexis. busy celebrating <laughs> his holiday. And Anyway, we are joined by Jimmy Conrad. What's up, everybody? Great to be here, as always, in the flesh. Yes. yes. Yeah, because we uh, you used to call- I see you a lot, and it's usually on the big wall at CBS. Yes, exactly. We <laughs> haven't had him in stew in forever. Exactly. I haven't even, I haven't seen you in quite a, I know, while. a while. I don't remember where. Maybe MLS All-Star or something like that. Uh, you're a dad now. You're all grown up. Right? It's really nice to see. It, it is uh, incredible. What about me? <laughs> No, yeah. none, of those, none of those things. No, 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 not no. a dad and not grown up. <laughs> Never do. Okay. Oh, yeah, even if, king. even if you became, even if you became a dad, you will not grow up. Anyway. <laughs> no, no. That's right. Baby girl got to change two diapers. <laughs> uh, but we have a lot to go over today with Jimmy. Obviously, we're going to talk some uh, USMNT stuff and and uh, you know his podcast uh, alongside Charlie Davies and and Jesse Marsh and call it what, what a man. what a I mean you and Charlie Davies yeah okay uh huh. Jesse Mart. Jesse Mart. What's he doing hanging that's out off, with these guys? That's off the top rope. <laughs> How did that happen? One of these things is not like yeah. that. <laughs> did he know you two were also going to be on this show? I don't know. <laughs> okay, we, yeah. we ultimately just tee him up. Exactly. And, and he's been fantastic. He's I actually great. thought he was going to be a little bit more... 
muted yeah, because yeah, yeah. he's Coach still looking speak. for yeah, yeah, a little yeah, bit. Yeah. But he is swinging. Oh, he right, absolutely right. is. Maybe has the flamethrower out just <laughs> yeah, a yeah, little yeah. bit. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, I got, I got plenty of time for oh, him. Oh, he gets brought up in press conference. Exactly. Yeah, Greg Berhalter has <laughs> yeah. oh, given okay, his opinion. Said, I, didn't say. <laughs> I was there. <laughs> okay. Uh, so we'll talk about that. Uh, we got some Premier League stuff to go over, obviously. And uh, uh, Jimmy was just at Arrowhead Stadium for the uh, Inter Miami Sporting was. City was game, there. which was incredible. So we'll talk about that. But let's start in the Premier League because Alexis's team finally they have finally bottled it as they wah, say wah, it's wah. always this time Where's of year Where's the sound effect for that? <laughs> wah, wah, wah. This time of year it always happens. <laughs> Arsenal lose to Aston Villa at the Emirates 2-0. Goals by Leon Bailey and Ali Watkins and just a second half masterclass from Unai Emery. Alexis how we feeling, bro? Here's what I'll say. First of all, thank you. Uh, very <laughs> nice of you to put me on blast this way. Here's what I'll say. The Leon Bailey goal in the 84th minute is the first time in 2024 that Arsenal were behind. Mm. So, in the league. But you still lost. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. In Great stat. Still so, lost. So, <laughs> I, I think it shows you a sustained of course. greatness. No, they've been, they've been very good. On they both sides been. of the ball. On both sides, especially defensively, which is what this is all frustrating. But once once the once the Bailey goal goes in, which is again, you guys in Shanko out there, someone's gonna be left behind. And that's exactly what happened. Defensively, he's not the best. Um, once that goal goes in, you push everybody forward, and that's why you get, you know, uh Ollie Watkins scoring with who defending him? Do you know who it was trying <laughs> to defend him? Oh, is that Zinchenko? No, no who do was you that? know who it was? Who was? Emil Smith Rowe! Emil Smith Rowe! Why is that your last guy back, man? <laughs> because you're pushing for the equalizer. They yeah. were trying to score, but, yeah. but what I find interesting is Zinchenko. Do you think he's still on the payroll for Manchester City? Because he's <laughs> been... <laughs> he Hilarious. has been... Uh, <laughs> I mean, honestly... Well, this two seasons in a row now, right? At least it would be a reason. You know what I mean? <laughs> at least we have an answer. I was surprised he started. Um, I'm not, because I'm surprised Tomiyasu I, didn't. I, I guess know, that you have Bayern Munich on the week. Yeah, week, I get so. I get that. The, obviously, a lot of the changes that were made were in prep for, what, keeping Martinelli, you know, safe. And also, remember in the second half of the first match against Bayern Munich, when Gabriel Jesus comes in, he starts putting the back line on pressure. He starts doing a lot of things. I think this was Mikel Arteta sort of saying, like, all right, you've earned the right to start again, and let's see what you did out there. And he showed none of that. Not <laughs> one bit of it. And it was so frustrating because he really wasn't putting the back line under pressure, especially when you don't have a Douglas Luiz, who's their best defensive midfielder. He's not there. You've got McGinn and Tielemans, two players that want to push forward. McGinn has been absolutely incredible going forward this year. And you have all this space, you assume, and you're just not getting anything. Yeah. Anything I mean, out look, of Gabriel Jesus. And why would you pull Havertz? Back over there. Yeah, the I mean, the if the the shot that Trossard takes with that that save from uh, Emmy Martinez, oh, the, 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 it's the a one complete, that looked like the World Cup final. Right, <laughs> it's a completely different game. By the way, former Arsenal goalkeeper. Exactly, he Emmy was Martinez. <laughs> he, and Ali Watkins, Arsenal fan. Okay, oh, that's right, I did hear that yeah. as well. Uh, and Leon Bailey, Jamaican. I don't know what that has to do with Arsenal, <laughs> but I'm just saying, at this point, <laughs> we, I'm just spitting facts. We will find the connection, <laughs> I will, Leon. I will list. I, I, I don't know if he, I don't know if he wants to play for Jamaica anymore. <laughs> no, that's, oh, that's true. right, yeah. Because he doesn't care about curfews yeah. or anything, or team rules. <laughs> oh, wait, oh, he yeah. gets he gets the uh, the flight details at 11 o'clock the night before. Yeah, yeah. Also, he's at the club when he gets there. <laughs> but I, yeah, no, no, in fairness, the Federation for Jamaica, not the best. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He, uh, he, he, he pointed out that uh, he he's like he hasn't seen a dollar from uh, from the Jamaican Federation, so he, uh, they're just not paying their players. Yeah. So I could see why uh, you know the Jamaican women's national team also voiced a lot of these complaints as well. So clearly, it's a systemic issue. Uh, the head of the federation said he didn't hear that because the, the money machine was <laughs> spinning, so he didn't hear the criticism. So is it is it? But is it over? Is it is the title race over? Uh, do you think Manchester City wins out and uh, Arsenal and Liverpool? Liverpool also lost. But why you, don't we do this? Look, bo both. We have to still play Tottenham, which I think is our toughest. Go to Manchester City mm -hmm. and click on their remaining matches. And you tell me where they could possibly drop points. Now, I will cry on the inside as you go through this list. <laughs> <laughs> okay, obviously this Well, I think what's interesting, too... Champions League FA, the well, next no, this has to be taken into consideration. If they get knocked out by Real Madrid in the Champions League and can put all their energy towards the Premier League, it's going to be really hard, I think, for... Anybody. Arsenal and Liverpool. Or too. Liverpool, sure. Right. Now, also, now that they're in the driver's seat. Even if they don't. 
It might not be. They won the treble last year. And remember, their backups are basically starters on 80% of the other teams mm -hmm, mm -hmm. in the Premier League. So I don't think that even comes into consideration. I honestly think maybe Brighton gives them a little bit of a hassle. They play no. against Tottenham, too. Huh? They play against Tottenham. The Tottenham, Tottenham is, I think, they, I, we they all agree struggle. The they struggle with Tottenham. They only scored once yeah, in their in the stadium. Last, yeah. Ever in the new stadium. Right, right. It's the last match of the season. So Everywhere I'm not sure else. I want to wait for that. Fulham, I'm probably not going to give him much of a game. Wolves, I mean, come on. Nottingham Forest, <laughs> I believe in Jeremy I mean, as I much mean, as the next guy. guy. Yeah. But come on. Brighton, maybe Brighton in the first half of the season. Brighton, this, yeah. This version of Brighton's no, no, dropped off. There's been a drop off. No, no, right, right. uh, Significant. Uh, yeah, I don't see. No, Machanza. Am I right, everyone? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> okay. I like, you're going to lose access to the buttons, bro. <laughs> I'm honestly shocked it's in front of me. <laughs> uh, but no, it doesn't feel like. Look, and I've seen, I saw some of the uh, videos from Arsenal Fan TV, and, uh, you know, they were basically, or AF TV, whatever. Uh, and they were basically saying, like, that's it, it's over. Manchester Dude, City win, also, win again. You know, I love AF TV. I'm a big AF TV fan. Shouts to Robbie, shouts to Cecil, shouts to everybody there. Oh, you, you got one guy calling, Mikel Arteta. Our Brendan Rodgers. Can, <laughs> can we just relax for People, one yeah, second? Like, emotion. This is this is how toxic this sport is. You can only share emotions when it's about football, <laughs> and you use you you wait and it builds up. I think Man City is going to drop points in one of those games. Where? Where it could be Tottenham. Think? Could get a draw. You think of the the last match of the season with the with the league on the line? Second, City are gonna... second last. They play West Ham last match of the season. Is there one more? Yeah, May nineteenth, West Ham. Ah, okay, second half. I mean, second uh, pen, the penultimate match. Why don't I, I do, see it on the? You gotta go up and click on the next button. Oh, okay, okay, oh, okay, okay. Got see it, right got there, got on the right. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. All right. But now it's just gonna say just was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, I think they're gonna drop points because this Man City team, for whatever reason, doesn't seem as focused yeah. as they had been in the past. Okay, but remember last year you win the treble and there's gonna be an emotional drop off, a, a lack of focus in some, and you've seen it already. What were they in eighth last season until the charges dropped? And then they beat the case, <laughs> basically, by beating everybody. They went on that crazy run. Yeah. I feel like when their backs are against the wall, that's when they shine. Manchester well, City, to me, are just like, we, letting them be in first place yeah, was an absolute capitulation by both Arsenal and Liverpool. And don't take away how bad Liverpool's match also was. I mean, at least Arsenal lost to... That's a bad the, week for Liverpool. Like, a we bad lost, week. Yeah, that we lost to the fourth place team. Liverpool lost to who? Crystal Palace? The Crystal Palace. That secured Crystal them Palace. not getting relegated, those three points. And Liverpool haven't lost at Anfield in something. Since the Jesse Marsh. No, since Leeds. the previous. Yeah. Well, in the league, because they just lost. To but at home, right. Atlanta. <laughs> well, then, the, then they drew Manchester United, then mm -hmm. lost to Atalanta at home, didn't score. Then lost to Crystal Palace at home, didn't score. So, okay, pretty, pretty bad time to throw I, up a lemon ask, of a week. Should I ask the question? Because no one's asking it. Is Jurgen Klopp He'd a, be sacked. a flop? <laughs> Is Klopp a flop? I, oh my God! <laughs> Is Klopp their Brendan Rodgers? <laughs> AFTV? Okay. His, his teeth look normal. So I'm not gonna say no. <laughs> okay, Jimmy, answer my question to make it a, a you know a valid question that seems like I'm a smart person. Also for the clip. <laughs> no, no, it's, no. A, it's a look. Yeah, the, I, I thought the game against uh, Crystal Palace was. Uh, the it, it was one of the, these things where uh, Crystal Palace defended. I, I made the joke about like they they it looked like they had eleven goalkeepers out there because there were so many goal line clearances, un unbelievable stops where Luis Diaz had uh, just everything looked like a tap in, and then yeah. so, all of a sudden the Crystal Palace player showed it's up. Just a body sliding past <laughs> us. <laughs> and who's that? The Dean Henderson is yeah. the, the goalkeeper. He was just like, bro, thank you, thank you, yeah. thank you, thank you. Just, <laughs> great, you know what goalkeepers yeah. they dap you up. You're a center back, so you know the the, the the appreciation. But he had to do that quite a bit. Okay, he had uh, he had more daps. Uh, then actual stops with his gloves. D expected daps. <laughs> <laughs> I I would say that if you are planning out a 38 game season, you're going to run into one or two of these where a goalkeeper's just standing on their head making yeah, a ton right. of saves, or you just can't finish, or whatever it is. You just hope they kind of get out early in the season so that when it really matters towards the end, you're making those having that clutch moment. And we've seen these teams have that now. Arsenal. Seems like they're getting closer to being the team that we all can see they can be mm -hmm. when they play to their potential. But at some point, they were going to have to suffer a little bit. And to what Mikel Arteta said afterwards, how are we going to deal with the suffering? That's I'm paraphrasing. Thing. Like, how are we yeah. going to react yeah. to this? They're still in the race. Liverpool are still in the race. Yes. I, I could feel all this gloom and doom, and I'm getting all these texts from my Liverpool fan, or friends that are like, oh, it's over, season's over. I'm like, 
shut up. It's over for like Newcastle, <laughs> like the team I said. It's been over for like weeks, you know, or months for those guys. So, so you're still in it. Like, yeah. All, Man City drops one, yeah, one, one game, and one now you game, win yeah. that one game. Yeah, you got to be perfect probably throughout because there's three teams. But that was right. always going to be the case whether you drop the points. In this I, game I don't think Arsenal are out of it. I mean, can we see the matches for Arsenal? I'm kind of curious. Yeah. I, I don't know. We actually have don't left. have the easiest run. Yeah. Uh, you guys okay. definitely have the most difficult run of City, Liverpool, Wolves and away, Arsenal. Chelsea at home. We're at home. Tottenham North away. London Derby will be the big one. That's going to be the one. Oh, yeah, this is a really tough run. And then Everton is our last match. Of Everton, season. yeah. That Everton's wow. going to spoil the show. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Hopefully you don't need it by that point. You haven't been deducted another 48 points or whatever <laughs> happens to Everton. This here. is the thing, too. If they, if they go to, to Germany and lose, then I feel like any team – I mean, Liverpool – could end up save the season by losing Champions League. <laughs> You're doing the shoot the hostage. <laughs> I mean, if it's, if it's for the betterment of the community, uh, you know, you might have to take it into consideration. I, like, look, the way I feel about it personally, and I love the fact that sometimes Europeans will watch our clips and they're like, "Yo, these times are mad." <laughs> these are American times. They're like 9 a.m. I gotta wake up at what time? Is your stadium? It's a, it's a East Coast times. Uh, I think the season is lined up perfectly for the North London Derby to be the reason we either win the league or not. Mm -hmm. well, however, that however those chips may fall, the North London Derby for us will be one of the most meaningful North London Derbies in a very long time. Well, I, since last season, we, we could have won the league as well. Right. Can, can you show uh, Liverpool's matches really quick? Sure, sure. Because Arsenal's is the most difficult that I've yeah, seen. Yeah, so Liverpool's is pretty easy as well. Atalanta, Fulham, Everton, Weston. Three away games in a row. At four. Oh, with Atalanta. Yeah. yeah. Atalanta, Three yeah. Uh, league games. Uh, then, then Tottenham at home. Wow. Aston Villa away. It's a tough. It's, it's that a final three is no joke. Villa away might be for them staying in the top four. Uh, Tottenham the same. Tottenham the same for sneaking in. This could be tough. That's it just, well, West Ham I, away is not easy either. I just also, the emotional toll of Klopp leaving seems to be taking seems uh, to be getting uh, harder and harder yeah, for yeah, this yeah. team. Right. Yeah. It, I just I just find it odd. Um, odd is not the word, but just like the, the standard – what what seemingly is for the Premier League nowadays is you have to win every game. Like I mean, just for to have title contenders. Well, yeah, you've got the monsters, <laughs> Manchester City. But it's just so what that even three teams could be in that conversation of like we have to win every yeah. single game, not even drop a point. That that the standard is so unbelievably high that perfection is what is required. Yeah. It's just, it, it's like remarkable. This is why the, the Arsenal fans and Liverpool fans can be like, oh, that's it, it's over, the season's over. Because they're like, we're not perfect. And Manchester City is. And they're going for their fourth uh, straight title. I, saw, I remember uh, when I was at, in Nashville for the Fan Fest, Alan Shearer was saying that he thinks it's going to be Manchester City. The whole crowd, boo, everybody's like upset. But he's like... They, he doesn't think that they're going to drop points. And the, the, the pursuit of four straight, champ, uh, uh, four straight Premier League titles in a row, which no uh, club has ever done, is what is going to propel them to, 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 to win it. So I, I don't want to see it because it's just like the way Bayer Leverkusen. They're Bundesliga now. They're bro. Bundes, we're gonna be, uh, probably going to be the Bundesliga now. In the experience of managing these situations, I think City, despite not playing well, are still good enough to know how to – let's just stay in the conversation. Yeah. Because we know how to manage it. These guys are going to trip up, and now we'll see how they react. Because they That's can say a big, we, this is such a big moment for they Arsenal. They can say we've done this before. Right. We did it last year, guys. Right. Relax. Right. Everything's right. fine. Right. Yeah. Where Arsenal's like, it's never going to happen. And Erling Holland still, <laughs> Holland still hasn't really been Erling Holland this season. It's crazy. Yeah. You know, maybe pre injury he was, but but post, it's just he's been yeah. a little bit off. Totally. Uh, um, his confidence is low. It's weird to see Erling Holland without confidence. And right. uh, it's nice question. to see that he's not a robot. Well, I mean, at least he did uh, He 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 did plan to rocket a ball off of, off of a dude's face yeah, into the goal. That's true. That was pretty impressive. Genius. The English, the English it's like he called, <laughs> he called backboard on that one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he backs open. <laughs> uh, uh, I was going to say, Eddie Howe in or out? Oh, yeah. It's tough. I, I think at some point. You have to bring in a manager that could probably also attract bigger personalities and bigger players. I don't think Eddie Howe has that cachet. Whereas speaking of cachet, you guys got a lot of money. Uh, <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, don't you think that's it. enough to? I, I do. From the players that I do know that play professionally over there, Newcastle is just really far from London. You know, yes. it's one thing if you're, you know, where in Birmingham or wherever, and it's maybe an hour away from mm -hmm. London, you could still right. get down there, but. There and back, you can't yeah. really be doing no. that type of stuff. So I think that does detract from maybe getting the biggest stars. But money does talk. And and I don't know, maybe Sandra Tonali's betting on 
who's going to come. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's so, calling Ivan Tony. Like, what do yeah, you think? <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> but, but, but yeah, yeah, with the money they can produce and and have. You're going to be competitive, and that's been nice as a fan is to be competitive, even though I kind of want to take a shower yeah. when I think about where the money's coming <laughs> right, from. Right. Uh, but it, but from the sporting side, it's just nice to be kind of in the conversation yeah. of competitiveness. Well, it was a great uh, conversation, especially of competitiveness, over the weekend because Newcastle absolutely, uh, I would say, embarrassed Tottenham 4-0 uh, at St. James. This was, um, I, I look, uh, uh, Alexis mentioned earlier about uh, Alexander Isak, and who, who is, I, 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 you know, I was already a fan of when he was at uh, uh, Real Sociedad. Uh, he was great. He was great. And then, uh, I, I, you know, sometimes you wonder, like, how do you end up at Newcastle, given, like, he had a pretty good record at, at Sociedad, and there, there was a little, he had a, a lot of injuries, so there was a, it was a little bit of a risk. But now it just feels like every Arsenal fan is just like, hey, when's he making the move, buddy? <laughs> like, we, Waiting all right, for you. We see, <laughs> we see what you can do, all right? You don't have to uh, show the world. We, we have faith in you. Um but Alexander Isak is one of my favorite players to watch. Uh, having him at Newcastle and, and you know, you being a fan of the club, uh, what do you think of this guy? Uh, I, I love his consistency. I think he at Sociedad showed that he could at times make things out of nothing. You know, because at, when I think about La Real, they don't always commit a lot of numbers when they go mm -hmm. forward. There's a real big emphasis on having balance, but they were never going forward with reckless abandon. And now you have a team around him in Newcastle where he, he, they do try to commit more numbers going forward. He's got a little bit more support, but he's also a guy that can create a goal by himself. And if he gets isolated in 1v1 situations, uh. like he's doing here, uh, <laughs> making Mickey he gonna, Van de Ven. He's going to break your neck. <laughs> 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 that, that is unbelievable. We're looking at the photo of Alexander Isak. You, usually when you get somebody like touching, touching grass, you know yeah. what I mean? It's yeah. usually with their butt or their hands. <laughs> uh, and this man is uh, doing just like he's a b-boy uh for time <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <Perfect. laughs> yeah it's but yeah he's he's i don't want to say he's been a revelation i just think he is actually living up to what people knew he was capable of and, and the, it's and it's, the value they placed on him that too it's not easy to live up to your potential it yeah. just isn't and i think we're seeing that and in some ways he's surpassing it with his consistency he just has to remain healthy and now, can you build pieces around him that can continue to maximize what he brings? Sure. And I think the one thing I, I'll speak about with his time at La Real, do you remember the player that was passing him a lot of those wonderful balls that he was doing, that he was scoring on? Well, Martin Mar 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 Odegaard. Martin Mar Odegaard, that's right. <laughs> so well, I, I was going with Ori Arcebal, but if, yeah, you yeah, yeah, yeah. if you want to go Odegaard, that's fine. <laughs> I don't know what word you just made up. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, it's a mouthful. Yeah. <laughs> no, but Martin Odegaard, and they seem to have a great relationship. Mm. I'm just saying. I'm sure the, you know, the, the, the text thread is there of being like, yo. Come bro, through. Come through, bro. <laughs> I saw what you did to Tottenham. You built. <laughs> you, you built, built for this. <laughs> <laughs> you already beloved. Also, Anthony Gordon is another. Obviously, you know, I'm an Everton fan. And, and when he, he left in, in not the greatest of terms, uh, with you know, with fans screaming at him in the street, uh, it was a bit it was a big issue. But he's really sort of settled into this role and becoming, I don't know, not kind of like a leader on this team. Well, I was I kind of want to throw it back to you. Did you see that in him when he played for the Toffees? No, I did not. I I thought he was, the, you know, kind of like the the like, oh yeah, you're fast. Go up there and do the, the fast guy oh, things. Yeah. <laughs> you just literally gave us Sean Dyche's halftime uh, speech. Yeah. But every but with Lampard, with every every manager was just like, you know, they 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 saw the creativity and they were like, give him give him some opportunity. But pretty much anybody that plays for Everton Football Club, you wear that shirt. You better defend, buddy. You better learn how to defend. You better make sure that that is your priority. So I don't think he he was given the room uh, 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 and space to to kind of show what he is showing now at, at Newcastle. Uh, and and not only that, I I do think with the way he's from Liverpool, the fact that he left his hometown to go play for a new club, it was like it's kind of like um, you know I thought him playing for Everton was like. Uh, uh, playing, you know, like going to college in your hometown, mm. and now he's like he got to transfer out and sort of like let me be my own yeah, person, sure. and that's what we're kind of seeing. No, I love that. Uh, that's a good description, I think, of how he's playing. And, and confidence is a hell of a drug. That's what I like yeah. to say. When he's got it, he's out, clearly got the trust from Eddie Howe and, and the rest of the players and the respect. Hey, give me the ball, and I can make things happen. And he's shown that consistently. He's another player similar to Isak, where if he gets isolated in one v one situations. You're feeling pretty good that something's going to happen. He's yeah. gonna, it, it, in coaching speak, they say bringing attacks to completion. Mm. He's, he's, he's gotten a lot better, consistently good at 
okay, you get in areas, can you get a shot off, cross off, does it turn into a corner, a throw in, something right, right. positive in the attacking third. And I think that's why he got his first ever England call up, which well deserved. Sure. Yeah, I, I've uh, you know I've known uh, there's, there's plenty of guys out there watching the show that can't in their relationships can't bring those tasks to completion. So they <laughs> yeah. got a lot to work. I think on. they have medicine for that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> also, there's certain areas of the pitch you have to focus on. <laughs> <laughs> you can't. You can't. You can't. It's not always Wait, where you are, think it's yeah, supposed yeah. to be. You gotta. <laughs> a lot you of areas. Just go right for the goal. <laughs> you you gotta <laughs> massage a lot of areas. Yeah. Yeah. You gotta work both sides of the. <laughs> Just of the work ball, the I don't even know what you're doing. <laughs> work the wings. wings. Okay, I'm looking at your heat map, buddy. And you're all over. <laughs> Yo, <laughs> you're too defensive. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, <laughs> you're too disciplined. <laughs> Arrowhead uh, Stadium. <laughs> Let's move on because you were uh, you were in. It's getting too hot in here. <laughs> you were in. Uh, I was uh, there. Kansas, uh, Kansas City. You've been there before. You played at Arrowhead. I did. Right? No? I did. How but different it... was this from when you played? Well, so back in 2010, we welcomed Manchester United to Arrowhead Stadium, and we ended up winning 2-1. I may or may not have gotten a red card because I'm awesome, everybody. And, uh, that was right, right? It was uh, too awesome. It, 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 yeah, Straight red. Yeah, yeah, just too awesome. <laughs> so it, what, it, you were out of three next friendlies? <laughs> 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 My glow is so nice. No, I was on Dimitar, Dimitar Berbatov, um, and I held a him offside, but my other center back held him on, and then I tried to be a hero and get back in the play, and I took him down in the box. Yeah. Well, that's not a big deal. It's a friendly. Who <laughs> yeah. doesn't do that in a friendly? It was just anyway, a little friendly. It's a friendly. <laughs> <behind. laughs> it's actually, I tried to get myself back in the yeah. set. It doesn't matter. I switched jerseys with him afterwards. He's a cool guy, but uh, hell of a player. But So I had gotten a taste of what that would look like against a big club, and we saw Sir Alex Ferguson on the sideline. Uh, was it Skulls a sellout? and Ryan Giggs were there. It was very similar. Almost a sellout. 75,000, 80,000. Yeah. Uh, and... and the atmosphere was good on that day. I think the attitude of wanting to see some high-level, beautiful game being played, mm -hmm. uh, I could feel that same type of energy for this That's game. why they took you off the pitch. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 We, we actually want to play. We'll actually take you off, <laughs> yeah, and we'll yeah. do it with 10 players. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we did. We ended up winning 2-1. Uh, Kai Kamara scored on a set piece, and we were up. We won 2-1. Wow. I swear to God. What? You, you, that, the, what? you look up the 1930 <laughs> World Cup at the U.S. <laughs> Kai Kamara. There's a photo of Kai yeah. Kamara scoring a header. With heart-shaped <laughs> hands. He's got the heart-shaped hands. I swear to God, this man is every part of this He's everywhere. Everybody has a Kai Kamara anecdote. You know what I mean? Like this. There's nobody he has not played with no. or against. Uh, <laughs> I think he's going for it. Try to play with every MLS team before his career is uh, He has to. He's, he's almost halfway, I think. Yeah, yeah. 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 He's yeah. going to be the DP signing for San Diego. <laughs> <laughs> I swear to it. Um, but, look, we got to see uh, Lionel Messi uh, at Arrowhead. I was watching the game. Uh, I, I I caught uh, – I missed some of the beginning because uh, I was at the NYCFC game uh, uh, against the Revs. But this uh, – I, I, uh, look. We, the we Revs got, have a team? <laughs> they haven't been very good this season. No, they have not. <laughs> Look, you Definitely were. Not against you got to see this goal. I did. I mean, Lionel Messi, absolute bang. It was a look. The pass, also the assist, was unbelievable too. The assist was out of the. <laughs> he looked up in a split second. He saw it all happen. Yeah. I, I. What I really marvel, and I've this might be my flex of the show. I've had the chance to see Messi play in person twenty times, and I got to play against him <laughs> uh, in the Copa America. So. What I really value, <laughs> keep coming up with the sound effects. Every what time I, you drop a heavy, it gets yeah. <laughs> every every time uh, I see him play, I marvel at how efficient he is with his energy. He doesn't waste any. He does a lot of walking around, and you think, did what did Messi actually do? Did he dig anything out of pressure? Did he? <laughs> but but he has a goal and an assist, and you're like, well, how did the guy do it? He just has a maximum impact with the least amount of work put out. And the guy's a genius. There's no question. He understands. His spatial awareness, situational awareness, to your point about the assist, he sees the guy making a run. He's just like, I got to wait for like that half second of people to move, and yeah. then that space will open up. And then the, the, the type of information he gives with his passes, and Busquets, he falls into it too. They, they make a pass, and that, that pass is telling you what to do. Yeah, right. right. Which I love. Go. I love it. I love it. It's like, yeah, I'm putting it in front of you. You got to go yeah. run in front and go, go. Sometimes I put it where you should have exactly. been. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I yeah, love yeah. that. Yeah, exactly. oh. Remember that goal against New York Red Bulls last year where he put it in uh, yeah, Kramaski's yeah. space? Mm -hmm. Kramaski reacted to it like, oh, you want me to go there? Oh. <laughs> and then and yeah. then still got there and crossed it. And there's a tap in for Messi. I mean, he's just seeing the game on a different level. And, and uh, 
Yeah, it just looks easy every time. I've you said watch this play. before, and I'll say it again. If you wanna, if you want America to be great at soccer, what you need to do, and not that we're not on our way, I do think we are. But what I would suggest is, if you have an academy of midfielders, right? Just show them Busquets clips over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. And honestly, the first touch Busquets takes, I'm like, how did he know that if he put the ball there with his first touch, that he would have acres of space around him? It's just like, man, you don't even really have to try. Mm -hmm. I mean, it is. I mean, we can talk about Inter Miami uh, on a like a bigger level because, yeah, we, we, the star players are the star players and they play very, very well. And it's always very impressive. But they are playing with some young guys. Some. It's like putting caviar in a Big Mac. <laughs> <laughs> still good. You know, it's still I'm not good. saying it's bad. <laughs> could and be good. It might be good enough it could be, for the could meal. It could be mind blowing. Right. Okay. Like, you might even know. get a little League's Cup toy in that happy <laughs> yeah. meal. You know what I mean? <laughs> Open it up. Yeah, yeah, you might, you might, they might just hand you a trophy in the yeah. league's cup. Be league's cup McDonald's trophy. might steal that recipe, bro. McDonald's <laughs> 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 like, yo, the McChampion <laughs> 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 cup. The McChampion <laughs> cup is crazy right now. Pull yeah. a tab and you get messy. I mean, you might have to lose the open cup toy <laughs> yeah, that's right. in there. Yeah. Well, but you can't have an open you cup. Can't. <laughs> <laughs> it's one or the other. It's one or the other. Jimmy, you stuff get in it. <laughs> Jimmy, what a terrible idea. <laughs> Nobody likes that idea. What are you talking about? Now we know who came up with it. Okay. I know it's existed for a hundred years, but nobody likes we'll it. Nobody likes it. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, sorry, burrito shop. <laughs> no messy for you. Uh, but, but yeah, the, the the fact that the team is um, the, the the salary cap issue. A lot of this is coming up now because of uh, Met, uh, Inter Miami getting kicked out of of uh, Champions Cup, and you know the uh, Tata Martino was talking about. You know, I basically don't have a, 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 a roster. He said uh, a lot. He said a lot. He's like, <laughs> I, I don't have a, a you know a bench uh, that I can bring in. Could you hear him through all the excuses? <laughs> what were your, I, I, least, I was trying to like wait. Excuse. At least he reality. took. A, at no, least he, I get it. You know, I get it. He opened the the door, so to speak, to the Could, conversation. All, all I'll say to that, why I bring that up, is because they do spend a lot of money. Now I know a lot of it's on one particular player, right. but it is funny that. They're probably right in the conversation with the Tigreses, and I don't know if that's where Tigreses <laughs> and, and Monterey's. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's a Tigre. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, you know, and and Club America and Chivas. Like, I think my, Inter Miami's in that conversation in terms of how much money they spend. Right. But obviously, it's allocated to maybe four players. It's top heavy. It's a top, it's top heavy, heavy and, and mm -hmm. that's why I think these new rules that MLS are imp implementing. In theory, I think should allow them to kind of fill those middle spots, let's say from seven to 14 in your roster, right. to be maybe a little bit better than what they have at the moment. Right, right now, you see a lot of potential based players, players that mm -hmm. you can see that they have it, but can Could they develop into that? Sure, yeah, can yeah, they yeah. consistently bring it? Now, when yeah. I watch them play, and I love sitting up high in, in stadiums because I'm a, I'm a dork and I like team <laughs> shape. And one of the things that I think would really help Inter Miami is if they just had better ball playing center backs. Oh, you mean if they didn't have to, if they could play out of the back? Yes. Yeah. It, it, well, it'll make a big difference. Right now, they got Busquets that drops in, and the center backs go wide. Which is ridiculous. You don't want Busquets to be he's that far, too far either. He's too far. Yeah, he's not as connected to where. And then my, then Messi's got to drop 10 yards and when he he's don't frustrated. don't want to run either. Right. So it's, it's You're they, they, gas... found their way, they found their way into the game. About, yeah. It took them about 30 minutes to find their way in, and that ultimately led to Messi being higher. And then they started to establish their control over it. Uh, but... Yeah, there's still a few pieces away, and a hundred percent. Yeah, it's I'm, tough because okay, what what hurts them is one or two players get hurt, and then they're really decimated because they've invested so much money into that kind of middle class of player, mm -hmm. and then then their bench gets really thin, and then you're really relying on younger players to help yeah. solve yeah, problems. Yeah, I mean, if they broke the roster rules to get Blaze Matweedy, just do it now. <laughs> <laughs> do it now. <laughs> you have way more reason yeah. and incentive now. <laughs> Bro, ain't no one going to say nothing, dude. <laughs> Go ahead, we wanted you to win Champions Cup, so now they're going to have to get the, what is the host country allocated spot for FIFA Club World Cup? Because you know it's going to be them. Yeah, that's, yeah, true. that's true. It's yeah. got to be them, bro. <laughs> Johnny Infantino's going to make a rule. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, they have it. The host country gets to pick any team they want oh. to be added to well, FIFA Club who, World Cup. Who's going to be? A, so why are they even crying about losing out in the Champions Cup? <laughs> that's what I'm saying. What's Tata Martino all upset about? Bro. You know it's yeah. coming. Uh, let's, I'm, I'm petitioning. Let's get the Colorado Rapids in there. <laughs> Chris Thomas. That's right. Let's go. Let's do it. Welcome to the FIFA Club World Cup. Impact the Montreal. <laughs> <laughs> We're bringing them back. Uh, the, but I, I do want to ask about the, the, just the game at Arrowhead and and having uh, all those people there. Obviously, sure. what, for for uh, for an MLS match, I, I, I assume that's the most ever for uh, an MLS game. I think it, um, it was close. We would have July Fourth games. 
Oh, okay. There, but they were the quietest July Fourth. They were just there for the fireworks. Really? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Not for uh, me. For but sure. look, we we see you there celebrating. And you look, you're a Kansas City uh, legend. hero, legend. A, a lot of people uh, love and appreciate whenever uh, when you come back. But what did this? Um, what what was the sort of feeling uh, like? Just uh, oh wait, is this a USMNT game? Oh no, no, this is I see an American flag. I just uh, this no, was, no, this is from the other game. Yeah, yeah. this is from the game. So, uh, but what was this uh, feeling like? Just being back and being back for a game of this magnitude. Well, for me, it's always fun to go back. I played eight years there. I was captain for four of those eights. Uh, I always love to do things in the community. I feel like I'm a man of the people. I could maybe even win mayor if I went back there. <laughs> I, I, think, I, you I could. think I could. Yeah, I could be a legit, you know, maybe a runner up. But I, I would have a good go at it. We'd have a lot do of fun. Do both sides of Kansas City have a different mayor? No. Kansas City, Missouri, Kansas City, Kansas. That's Same a great. Mayor? I don't even actually oh, know that's that. A good question. So you I might know. be able to run for the other one. I the should. One they don't Case, KCK and KCO. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I have to think that through. Maybe I could be the one that brings everybody together. Also, why does this lady hate you? She's not even looking in your direction. You see her bottom right? Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> wow. She's probably yeah. just a, a new fan, sporting yeah, fan only. Some people don't know. You got to respect the Wizards. You know <laughs> what I mean? <laughs> but uh, no, it's great. These people have been supporting us for a really long time and have been in the trenches with us when yeah. we were at Arrowhead and it was a bit cavernous. They'd be coming out mm -hmm. consistently and, and saw some very good teams over the years. We just didn't have the same type of support. And I think when they built Sporting Park, then you start to have your own confines and you create that culture and, and identity that you, that you want. And then you bring it back to Arrowhead. I know there was some fans that were upset about not having it at Sporting Park and bringing Messi to the well, friendly confines why. there. 72,000 people. 72,000, but I think it's a chance to be exposed to a bigger audience who could be Euro snobs or just inter-Miami fans or just kind of curious about seeing the greatest of all time do it. And can you win them over? And I actually thought Kansas City played pretty well. Eric Tommy scored yeah, some great going, goals. Eric Tommy looked good. And, and yes, they didn't win the game, but I think there was enough there that I'd be like, ah, maybe I will go to a game to Sporting right. Park. And that's where it start. And what that's where you get the beat. This is the gateway drug to yeah, something Yeah, what bigger. was the ratio? How many pink jerseys did you There was a lot see? of pink jerseys. Okay. I, I don't know the ratio per se, but the, the, the two goals happened within 20 minutes of each other in the first half. And when Eric Tommy scored, everybody's like, sick goal, awesome, good, good volume. And then when Messi dropped that assist for the, f that was pretty loud too. So okay, I would okay. say it was a little right. bit 50-50. Yeah. What did you think? Because uh, I, I tweeted this uh, about this was a bad take. I'm gonna tell okay, you. that's fine <laughs> if you think that. But Patrick Mahomes uh, greeting uh, Lionel Messi. So I'm not. Does Messi know who Mahomes is? Because I'm not always sure that he knows all these people he's getting introduced. I just think introduced he's like, yo, there's a really big dude, and he's in an important room. <laughs> <There's> a, <there's laughs> but the the I had I had an issue with the glasses. Look, if I'm meeting Lil No Messi, I'm gonna. It's not even about he, that he's a deity, even though some people believe he is God and and whatever. But I'm gonna, I gotta take off my glass. These glasses are. Wait, wild. Well, like, show me your take. I didn't see it. That's his take is that he should have taken off the sunglasses. That he oh, the ridiculous shades. I, I thought the, the shades are too goofy. They, they look a little bit like the, you know. This is who he is, though. And also, Messi knows he's meeting an American sports personality. That's what an American sports personality <laughs> That's fair. Look like. That's fair. He probably thought he was a NASCAR driver. <laughs> yeah. With but those shades I, on. I, look, Patrick Mahomes is is from the South, right? He's like Southern gentleman He sounds type. like he's bound and down. <laughs> So I, like exactly like the I, character for me. I assume there should be a little bit of like uh you know showing respect. Taking off the glass, take off your hat. You know what I mean? Nah, it's like saying you want Kobe to put on dress shoes when he meets somebody. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like who cares, bro? I don't, Mamba it's not mentality, yeah. dude. I'm not like upset. I just like, bro, come on. Bro, Mahomes isn't meeting Messi. Messi is meeting Mahomes. Okay. Mahomes. Right. There, there we, we go. go. <laughs> do you know? So I've only I haven't seen the video, but do you know what supposedly Mahomes told Messi? Oh right yeah, yeah. He said he said make sure you have fun out there. Go out there and make sure you have fun. <laughs> Why are you telling that to Messi? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he wanted to play the dad role. Yeah, what, are you, what, are you, what are you saying to Messi like he doesn't know that? Oh, it's a good point. Like, like, you know, I have something I have to work on. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I didn't do that when I won the World Cup. <laughs> <laughs> and that's my one regret, Mahomes. I heard a story, you guys can confirm or deny this for me, where Floyd Mayweather went to see Inter Miami play last year. Mm. And Messi didn't stop to say hello to him because he doesn't know who Floyd Mayweather yeah, yeah, is. Yeah. And I guess obviously Floyd Mayweather's gonna be pissed about it. Yeah, yeah, Messi's yeah. like, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. so I don't know. I don't know how much information he's getting, especially if this is right before a game. It's like the last thing I'm thinking about. Right. Some American sports star, you're like, 
It's like yeah. Super Bowl. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> cool. cool. This guy. They he gets still do those? He gets, yeah. he gets introduced to, I, who knows, yeah. countless people Probably at all levels. Pepsi executives. Yeah, it could be all kinds of people. <laughs> <laughs> like, so, so maybe Mahomes thought he needed yeah. to wear sunglasses right, like right, that right. so that they would never, Messi would never forget him. Yeah. I, I would love if uh, Patrick Mahomes was the Pepsi executive <laughs> <laughs> wearing these glasses <laughs> everywhere. He like, does every this guy <laughs> own the team? He does, actually. He's part owner. I love it. No, so look, I think. I think a monumental uh, game and uh, um, just a moment, I think, just for Major League Soccer, for even uh, Sporting Kansas City. You know, like you said, like some people were upset uh, that the that the game was moved from Chosen Mercy Park. But then and then also the ticket prices as well. Some people were uh, frustrated with that. Well, so, s yes, but think about what how much they would have cost at Children's Exa Mercy exactly. Park. Exactly. It would have been, been insane. Exactly so now right. you now make the game more inclusive. Totally. And more available for people that might not have been able to afford. And the resellers don't make as much money. Exactly. <laughs> so yeah, everybody pour one out. There's for the a lot to unpack here. here. I, I'm just glad Messi put on a performance that because sometimes it right. doesn't always work out that way. When when it's not just him, but it's any star player gets like that the Saudi much Arabian hype. tour. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that didn't work out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Work out that wasn't. They a did good just one. whip a player, so maybe it's good he wasn't there. <laughs> I, I want to move on to uh, U.S. Men's National Team and just uh, uh, just you know kind of what to look forward to uh, in Copa America. Copa America. Oh, co oh, 26. Yeah, 26. Copa America. There's a lot. Uh, you know the, the the you know we won. Uh, what did we win? The the other oh, trophies. Nations, Nations League. Nations League. I, I was hey, gonna say go back. Hey, hey, put some. Respect you know what it. we did? We so, went out there and had some fun. We had some fun. <laughs> we just <laughs> Mahomes talked to us before the game, and that's why I we think won. So it was just a large pair of glass sunglasses. That I, <laughs> I couldn't see. Um, but the, uh, the first, I want to start with the fact that Gio Reyna started uh, for Nottingham Forest yeah. the other day. He got an assist from a, from a corner. Uh, Morgan Gibbs White got uh, at the end of uh, on the end of uh, of that cross. Um, and. It, it just, uh, you know, Gio Reyna has come up a lot for right. some positive reasons, a lot for negative ones. What are you wondering? Did he do enough? Did he do enough to get I think start? he did. Yeah? They play Everton next. Okay. Yeah. That's right. I, I was going to ask a, a very yeah. simple question. Yes. Did he uh, do enough well, to... Well, it's, it's more about he had 71 minutes before getting yeah. taken off. First of all... He had what he had. He didn't have seventy-one. Uh, I know. It's <laughs> in like the last <laughs> two, <laughs> two years combined. Yes. I, what I appreciated is that he's being trusted. So it's more kind of in the intangibles department where, okay, you have a Morgan Gibbs White who runs point for yeah. Forrest. Mm -hmm. And he's like, yeah, cool. And then obviously he gets an assist to Morgan Gibbs White. And now Morgan Gibbs White's like, hey, I like this guy. Yeah. Right. So you start to get these little bits of trust and respect. And they put them on set pieces. That's a big deal. And is that, that starts... part of the game, though, feeding the big dog on the team if you're new? No, I don't think necessarily. But I think it does help that you're looking for that player. Like when you see Busquets and Messi play, they're looking for each other yeah, first, yeah, yeah, yeah. but they're so that. good. They can hold that little you know, delay. Busquets and then... is like, I don't know who that guy is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> can he get out of the way? <laughs> I'm going to tell him to stop yeah. bothering yeah, exactly. you, Messi. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, hey, my guy. I know you know my team. <laughs> but could you kind of just like, yeah. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Chief. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Chief. All right, come on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Julian, what's his name? It's, is it Julian, Ju remind me. <laughs> Julian Yedlin? Yeah. 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 I, there's a lot of, yeah. Yeah, just people coming in and out of here. I don't know. Or maybe he's like super European and just calls every American Smith. Hey, Smith. Just... Just get it to the yeah. next guy. Don't lose yeah. it. What's his name, Brad? But uh, <laughs> but yeah, there is moments like that where you have players that are clearly looking for each other, and and there's some dialogue and communication that's happening. Like, hey, if I get into this space, and, and or if you beat in your player, look for me in this pocket of space. So uh, yeah, I think all that's really important. So to give him 71 minutes and then not allow him to build on that when you're thinking about team building and and working with individual players, I thought he did enough to warrant another start. I believe you give them maybe three, four games in a row, and you see what that looks like. Now, obviously, Forrest is one yeah, point above the relegation, so I get it. Yeah, I yeah. get it. But for him to get that trust this deep into the season with so much at stake, I think is a good sign. And, and I think he can bring something to that Everton game, especially if he continues to demonstrate that he is a guy that should be on set pieces. Because Ooh, that was essential. It's huge, yeah. especially in these games where everything gets a little bit tighter. It also adds a little bit of value. Decide. It does. It's just a little extra bit of value. There was one moment, I don't know if you guys saw this, where Giorena shot the ball and it went just wide. 
He found a little bit of space. He looked up. There was no one really to pass to. Takes a shot on goal, which I think was the right instinct at that moment. But it goes just a little bit of wide. And they pan over to Nuno Espiritu Santo, who just kind of puts his head in his hands. <laughs> and I'm like, is that that you didn't score? Or is that because the American tried something? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? But that's where we're yeah, all at. Yeah. It's like we're a little bit tight. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. don't. Well, with him in particular. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we all want him to do well. I mean, what is the, uh, you know, obviously he's on loan. He's going back to Dortmund. What is the future? Do, do these next, like, seven, eight games, will, will they determine the next few years for Gio? It's possible. It's one of those things when he made the move from Dortmund, it would have been cool to see him with a team that's kind of on the up and up or, or, or needing someone, I think of Bologna and Serie A, who are playing ridiculous Thiago right now Mota. for Tiago Mota. Yeah. And, or... or I thought Las Palmas was in a, in a good space for a while. They've dropped off a little bit. Like a, a mid-table team in, in one of the other leagues where he could go and, and benefit from not having to be everything or maybe benefit from being the guy, going somewhere where they will trust him to pull the yeah. strings. So, so going to Forest where you knew you are going to have to scrap and fight, this Everton game in particular, if Nuno says, I don't know about the physicality of this one, this is not a game for you, I could see him making that type of decision, and I hope not. I hope that Gio could go out there and be like, it doesn't matter. I'll bounce off of these guys. They kick me a few times. Who gives a shit? Okay. Um, but I'm I don't know, right? Because if I was playing against him, i just kick him a few times. That's what we used to do against Landon Donovan. Like, you want to <laughs> yeah. slow him down guys, and, like, game plan? Kick him. <laughs> 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 Honestly, you get him disinterested. On three. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you laugh. There's no jokes there. Like, look, these guys are so good. You have to try to gain your little advantages while you can. And if it means we got to foul him a couple times to help set the tone, it makes the game easier for you and the rest of your team so you can get a win. Dude, you do those little things yeah. for sure. And so if you identify a player that might have a drop-off in play and an intensity and focus because you kick them a few times, that happens everywhere in every league. Yeah. And every team has a few of those guys where it could impact the game. I'm not going to say who, but I was. Uh, we've had multiple former U.S. men's national team players on morning footy, so you'll never be able to figure out who this is. But one of them <laughs> in particular off-camera said, none of these guys on this Nations League team – would have made it into my <laughs> 11, which I think is a little crazy. But I do want to hear just... Now I'm trying to go through the yeah, Rolodex. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll tell names. you who it is after, uh, and it won't surprise you. Um, <laughs> but I'm trying to think of a, a player like Gio Reyna. If he was on the men's national team, and you were still on the, on your team, I should say. Well, your, I played with his dad. So. Right, on okay. your, but mm -hmm. he's not, I don't think that close to his dad, right? Like similar character-wise. Oh, in his terms dad of was a bit more playing like, style. Yeah, a bit more, yeah. Or his dad was just, seemed like a bit more quiet and like non-reactive to certain things. Maybe I'm just getting that from okay, yeah. a fan part. He's like, well, I don't, I don't agree. <laughs> no, but, I mean, yeah, he, he, he's awesome. He could play yeah. the ball in his, he played a little bit deeper. Yeah. But, but um, uh, yeah. What would you think of his... His move to, to Nottingham Forest and where he is in his development. Because I think we all see the potential. Mm -hmm. But where does someone who played for the men's national team, do you see a player like him being like, if it, I, to us he feels so essential for any success we have. Do you view it the same way? Maybe not specific to Gio Reyna then, but do you view it the same way where like one player makes such a big difference? Maybe not as much anymore because we have so many players playing at bigger clubs and we have – so many players that are ready to break through the ranks and prove themselves. And so Gio Reyna's special. There's no question. He's got more talent in his pinky than I have in my whole body. And that was when I was at my peak. You know, the, guy's, the guy's unreal. And, he is and, incredible. And the game is very, I say easy for him, but he can see things that, that some of the other players can't. And he slows the game down in a way that allows things to develop. So, so there's that little half second where he can hold the ball just, just a little bit longer, which then... And Messi does it, but Messi does it probably a little bit more consistently, obviously. But probably the greatest we've ever seen in Dortmund. Yeah, yeah. But 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 Gio has a little bit of that 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 holding to let things develop and can see it and just hey, if I shift the ball even like half a yard, yeah. that will move a defender where I want that player to go, and then I can play. I think it's instinctual for him. I just think he's been around the game for so long. He's got parents that live and breathe it as well when they were growing up, and he's just been a student of the game. He can just understand it at a different level. Now, when I see him go to Forest. I understand there's some desperation in getting out of Borussia Dortmund. So, okay, whatever. Let's just go to the Premier League. Probably not the best setup for him because of where they were in the table. Mm -hmm. They have a lot of talent on that team as well, but they're in survival mode. I would like to see him go from a survival situation to a, uh, a situation where he could thrive. And right. That's what I was talking about a little maybe bit. Not before. fighting for the title, but also no more fear of relegation. Yeah, that would have been a better fit. So I'm. Yeah. I don't know. This forest thing comes and goes. We'll see how he does. If he doesn't play the next five or six games or doesn't have any impact at all, it's going to be harder for Dortmund to move him, to be honest. Yeah. And, and then I wonder where he goes. 
But if he actually plays and Forrest stays up, maybe Forrest wants to, to keep him because maybe he had become that type of impact player. Now they can see him in the summer going, I now can see where Gio Reyna fits into the puzzle. Right, right now I feel like it was Nuno doing a, a doing a favor to because yeah. <laughs> they share the same agent. Right, right, right. So so if you can get out of that kind of narrative or or mentality around the situation, then I think that, that there's positive things ahead. He's he's yeah, he's incredible, but. It's it's wild how he's like you know the player of the tournament at, at Nations League, and then you know we were at the the Azteca during the World Cup qualifier uh, where he ran through the entire uh, Mexican defense, and so you see the ability and and the talent, and then maybe it's because you know a lot of stuff is kept in house, especially at Dortmund. I can't understand what the issue is at Dortmund that. That the, the the coach doesn't want to play him. Uh, well, Sebastian have... Kiel, the sporting director for Dortmund, had a quote maybe three or four months ago, and Gio was still there. And he, if you read between the lines, reading the tea leaves, it just felt like he had sell paraphrase essentially mentioned, "We need players that are going to train hard every day." Mm. Now, I'm paraphrasing, but there was yeah. something in that it was the first time that Sebastian Kiel had kind of mentioned Gio in that capacity that we were all like. That's interesting. Yeah, yeah. That's a if you're in the kind of coaching speak cliche. Right, 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 right. That is hinting at something because they can't even move him. So you have to wonder what kind of reputation is swirling around him at the moment. Right. Because everybody can see that he's talented, uh, but can he consistently bring that? And not just game day, but but also at practice. And also, what kind of teammate is he? Right. Is, is he quiet? That's that's fine if he's quiet. But is he still? being a positive contributor to the environment and the culture of the team. Right. These are all speculations. Sure, I have sure. no idea, but I just, that was Sebastian Kiel for the first time. She finally showed a little something where you kind of like, ah, okay. This is what happened. Yeah. A little bit of something like there could right. be a dot here. And then to, the, the, that's like, if you're like, you're my new girl, my mom didn't hate my new girl. And you're like, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So yeah, I don't, I don't know. Well, I don't then, know. These are us trying to read between the lines. Cause we are just as yeah, really you can yeah, you on the yeah. pitch, on the pitch. Uh, look, yeah, I think it's, uh, uh, it is absolutely obvious. The guys, the uh, guys are talent. And, but then the, I thought the other uh, point, about uh, Matt Turner when he did that uh, interview when he was talking about when Gio Reyna arrived and he said, oh, did uh, Gio Reyna like you, you would hit, think. Hit, hit you up and talk about like coming to the forest? He's like, no, uh, you know, Gio didn't text me. He didn't say, I was like, oh, yeah. That is interesting, right? You have the yeah. USMNT goalkeeper on the team that you're going to. You wouldn't even like hit him up about right. it. Just be like, yo, what's, what's the good food around yeah. there? <laughs> I mean, that would have been my first call. Hey, I have a chance to go to forest. Matt, Matt, tell me, do you think I'd fit in there? What's like, training you, like? You, you, you know my skill set. You know yeah. my profile. Should I bring my lawn chair to train? <laughs> <laughs> right. So, so I, it's it's there's something, yeah. and you just wonder what that is. To your point, though, about that instinct, we uh, when we hosted the Premier League Fan Fest last year in Orlando, Ian Wright was talking about something about a, a striker was doing, and he said he was talking to Alan Shearer, and I'm like, getting to listen to this is like. Two Michelin star chefs <laughs> talking about, oh yeah, well I go around the bone of the chicken. You know what I mean? It's like, what? Oh my god! And the two caviar of them on a Big Mac. <laughs> yeah. And they're like, have you a fun? Uh, and they were saying, they were saying something, and I, I had to. I'm like, could you elaborate on what you? Because they were done with the conversation. I didn't want to interrupt. But I was like, hey, you said something before to Ian Ram. Like, can you elaborate on what it was? It was something about running off the shoulder of mm, a center mm, back. Mm -hmm. And he said, yeah. He's like, most most fans think. When the play, the player who has the ball looks up, you start your run, but the center back is aware that that might happen. So what you have to do is get close enough to him so that the moment he turns to look at where the ball is, that's where you're in their blind spot. And if you start the run there, there's no center back that can keep up with you. And I was just like, yeah, I would have never thought <laughs> about the the eight seconds before that because you think it's like, okay, ball, now run. And he's like, no, no, no. I think the ball is going to go to him in two passes, so I'm starting to get closer to the center back so that he thinks, oh, I got him. And then when I go to look at the pass, I'm now in his blind spot, and he run I'm like, yeah. this is just a way of thinking yeah. about the game. I'm like, bro, who taught you that? And he goes, nobody. I, you know, That's what I do. I'm Ian Wright. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, that's a great point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, you are Ian Wright. I love Wright. Wright is the best. I, I would say that I had the chance to go up against some good strikers in my playing career. Thank you. <laughs> and... and Miroslav Klose was one of them who scored, I don't know how many World Massive. Cup goals. Yeah. He's not, he's a good athlete, but he's not going to blow you away with his athleticism. But his ability to create space in the box and pull off your shoulder, you just don't know 
like how, where, how, when yeah. did that actually happen? Right, but right. that instinct, that understanding, the timing of that, that's some of the subtlety and nuance that I don't know if all of our kids are being taught here in this game in, in, or in our country where what, if they do it, is it being reinforced? Like keep doing that. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. I, yes, there's obviously some great coaches at all levels in this country, of but, but it's, it's, that's where I think we're still a little bit behind. Those little margins. Those little margins and, and that reinforcement mm-hmm. of – so a kid goes – I, okay, cool. Now I know I'm going to keep looking for that. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I can sense that when I coach uh, the, the younger players, they, they need a little bit of that reinforcement to kind of like, hey, you're, you're thinking the right things and right. you're making the right decisions. Keep going. You're going to make mistakes, no question, but keep keep thinking about the game in this way. Still keep being a student. Keep trying to identify space. Right. There's, there's this crazy stat where I saw in a 90-minute game, a professional player will only touch the ball for two minutes. So you got 88 minutes. What are you doing in those 88 minutes? What are you minutes doing in those 88 minutes? Yeah. And yeah. I don't know if our kids are being taught here in this country enough about those 88 minutes. Spatial awareness, situational awareness. And that's what frustrates me. I drop my kiddo off at the, at the field. They've got four teams on one field. Mm-hmm. Yeah, cool. They're getting their touches in. Super important. They're doing rondos and all that type of stuff. But they can never break out into something bigger to understand the timing of when to move, mm. to talk about what Riley's talking about. When are you going to teach that in a rondo? Pulling off some guy's shoulder to get a ball up over the top, and right. you know how to like. You saw some people doing that in a rondo. Be like, you're not even paying attention. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You're doing the rondo <laughs> like, Come on, man. Get it, give it, get it, give yeah, it. Yeah. You know what the hell is going on here? Yeah. And there's a place for all that, but I think we really handcuff a lot of our younger players because we're not giving them the space to actually learn how to play the game. Right. I think with this conversation, the reason I know that 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 phrase or that thing about the two minutes to three minutes, I've heard it both numbers, is because the conversation about around Kai Havertz, how effective is he? And it's a players, you know, fans will be like, ah, he missed that shot or he wasn't there for that header. It's like, well, you're not watching him. And sometimes because he's not on camera because you're not at the game, but you're not watching him when he's off the ball. It's one of the most, one of the greatest off the ball uh, players I've seen in an Arsenal coaches shirt. Coaches love him. This guy, I'm like, he is, I love when, when fans are like, he's not playing well, but a coach and Arteta will say this a lot. He, he did all the right things. Mm-hmm. And they're like, how could you say that? He didn't well, score. he's being like, judged on the two minutes. Right. Whereas, by the fans. Right. And what you coach see is like, this guy's crushing yeah, it for 87, <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're 87, 88, the off the ball Yeah, he stuff, made the, room for that goal. The spatial he awareness, this, situational yeah. awareness is off the charts. But, yeah, he's not always as impactful in the two minutes. But right. that's where we judge all the players. Right. What are they doing in those two minutes? It's yeah. not really the 88. And not to say we need to change our analysis. Kai yeah, Havertz right. needs to play better, you know what I mean? <laughs> no, God damn it. I well, think yes. you're doing just fine. I, th- I think it's Well, unfair. if he plays the right position, right? Yeah. Why yeah. is Arteta Bring not putting him up top? Yeah. Why is he back in the midfield? Right what are you doing, Arteta? Come on, Arteta. I, look, I wouldn't even, even, pe- even some of the people uh, tuning in, they're in relationships and uh, are judged on those two minutes. And <laughs> you know, they what? should try. <laughs> you what? Know what? How are you lasting so <laughs> yes. long? Two, two minutes. <laughs> Jesus. Okay. Who uh, has time for two minutes? Anymore? Porn stars watching our show. How am I supposed to be productive in my yeah. work life if I had to commit more than two minutes? <laughs> it's okay. Uh, Jimmy Conrad, thank you so much for joining thank us. Thank you so much for having me on another <laughs> cool, <laughs> cool again's episode. This is your first time in our studio. Uh, this is the we're, we're all grown up, Jimmy. I know we're all grown up. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> It is crazy. <laughs> a little you have sad. two children at home and two kids right here. In the studio. It's a lot of diapers to change. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We're all, Still. <laughs> we're all yeah. from, from the same podcasting tree. Okay. Yeah. We can't believe we can't <laughs> But we also say this Sponsored every time. Sponsored by Pampers. Every time you're on, we say this. Thank you for all of your help and support early on. You're, I don't have enough money to pay you guys no, for saying yeah. nice things. Honestly, I just this, th- this man's encouragement early on meant the world to us. Did we get a lot of it from kissing up? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> but it was on purpose. Uh, you, you've, you know, when we look at the the sea of content and how you know we're like, oh, that we want to do something similar to what they're doing here, and we want to do that, and we want to change the game. Oh, you're here. stealing all my stuff? Is no, that we what you're were a big, you were a big part of it. And I was like, look, this guy's trying to be funny. But he, yeah. <laughs> well, we can actually go out there and actually do, do it. it. Imagine, yeah. imagine yeah. that, but funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that. That, that. Was, I that was our that. elevator pitch. Yeah. 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 What yeah, Jimmy's so doing, but, doing, but actually funny. Right. Right. They're letting him do it. Exactly right. I think that was actually my my advice. If I can do it. 
Yeah. You guys can definitely yeah. do it. Uh, yeah. make sure, I think that was actually. Yeah. Make sure you follow Jimmy Conrad Don't on, do it. on all no. socials, no. at Jimmy Conrad. No. Uh, he's on, on uh, Twitter and IG. Uh, absolutely crushing it. Legends of the game. Watch him crush me in betting every single week. That's <laughs> well, because yeah. he picks 10 teams. Yeah. <laughs> and I I'm trying two. so hard. I'm in <laughs> yes. last place. You also, uh, you, you're on Morning Footy uh, every week, uh, right? Uh, yeah, every yeah. week. Yeah. I come on every week. Got the podcast, Call It What You Want. Yeah. Call It What You Want, baby. <laughs> you can. It should have been the name. You, you can call whatever you want. You can call honestly whatever you want. Just know that's me. Last two minutes. Jesse Marsh or Charlie Davies. Yeah. They probably already clicked off at this point. Yeah, exactly. Uh, like and subscribe. Davies, yes. Jesse Marsh. Still, every time I hear, I'm like, doesn't this man want a future? <laughs> Maybe Jesse Marsh could come in here, come oh, through one day. I don't maybe. know. Who knows? Maybe. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, make, make sure you follow us at Soccer Cooligans on all uh, socials as well. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Uh, and, and shout out to everybody watching on DraftKings Network uh, yes. uh, as well. Uh, oh, yeah. Also, shout out to Saturday's Football because we did the Great event. Uh, the comedy show last week with Andrew Mensa, uh, a couple people. Uh, uh, for fans and friends, they all uh, came through. I like through. your modeling shots. Those oh, are nice thank photos. You, thank so you, much. Sir. Uh, but we had an absolutely great time. So shout out to Saturday's Football. Uh, maybe we'll do another one because it was really, really dope. It was all uh, footy fans in the crowd uh, watching stand up. We got to do footy jokes you normally don't get to do. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, it was great. So uh, uh, make sure, uh, yeah, make sure you give uh, Saturday's Football uh, a shout as well. All right, everybody, thank you so much uh, for tuning in. We will see you on Thursday with another spectacular episode. We have a great guest on Thursday. Uh, uh, should I? Can we? Yeah, sure. Right yeah. Uh, Ali Curtis is coming back. How uh, crazy is wow. that? Uh, MLS Next Pro uh, Vice President. He didn't want to be here the first time. And can, he's you ask, <laughs> can you ask him if Kai Kamara is going to play for any <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. team? Because I think he's got now a new 29 to, to try to play for. So uh, Ali Curtis will be back to talk some MLS Next Pro stuff. Maybe we might ask him, you know, how these MLS Next Pro clubs mm -hmm. doing in Open Cup because. Sebastian Salazar has a, had, a, had a strong take on that. He wasn't really. really we'll, we'll get to it. We'll, we'll ask guys, him all the we'll questions. We'll have to be really nice to him. So <laughs> stop sending us those questions. <laughs> uh, all right. So we'll be back on Thursday, everybody. Uh, shout out to Jimmy Conrad. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank uh, you. See you on Thursday, everybody. Later. Peace. Love you guys. <laughs>